Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about fades. So honestly, I'm making this video because Pro Tools Fade Shortcut is one of the recommended searches on YouTube. So hopefully this is stuff that people are looking for that you guys want to know. I'm going to give you guys the shortcut and then I'm going to talk about working with fades a little bit. Okay, so first of all, I'm in the smart tool. So I have all three of these tools highlighted, right? So you can either click on the bracket or you can hit any two of the F keys that correspond to these tools. So that is F6, F7, and F8. So any two of those will activate that smart tool. So I'm in that tool, which means I can just click with the grabber and I can hit delete to delete a fade. I'm just doing that so I can show you how to make a fade, right? So now if I click with the selector on the top half of the clip, I can click and highlight the end of the clip and then I can just do Command F to make a fade. And that automatically opens up this fade dialog. Honestly, I don't really make fades this way. I'll show you how I make fades in a second here. But this is one of the ways you can make fades. You can drag around this line here to change, you know, how uh, straight the fade is, how exponential it is, whether it's kind of concave or convex, whether it jumps up really quickly in volume and then evens out, or whether it slowly ramps up and then jumps really quickly at the end of the fade. It's up to you. So you can drag it around. You can also change options here. for the shape. And I don't actually recommend these square shapes. It's kind of risky when you have a sudden spike from zero up in volume and level and whatever you want to call it. Sometimes you'll get a speaker pop. So I kind of avoid these because I'm worried about that. But um, you can do that. And if you want to start dragging it around again, you can just go to standard here and then start dragging it around. You can also do an S curve, which is kind of fun. It just depends on the sound that you're working with and what type of sound you want for the actual fade, right? So it's really up to you. It depends on what, whatever you're working on. You can do equal power or equal gain. So I think about equal power and equal gain more critically when I'm doing a crossfade, which I'll show you guys how to do in a second here. So an equal power crossfade is kind of recommended for things that aren't going to have phase issues with each other. So for example, if you have two samples that are the same exact sample, they're the same exact sound, then phase can be more of an issue for those, right? Phase is usually an issue when we have, for example, two microphones on the same sound source, or we have two clips that are essentially the same sound in some capacity. So yeah, so basically I'll do an equal power crossfade when the sounds are different from each other, when phase isn't as much of a concern for them. And basically the equal power fade, what it means is that it's gonna be maintaining that volume level, that overall volume throughout that crossfade. So it's it's worrying about the actual power level, maintaining that volume level, right? Because power, decibels, volume, that stuff. So then I'll use an equal gain crossfade when I do have to worry about the phase issues between two things. So if it's two microphones that are on the same sound source or if it's samples that are basically the same sound over and over, then I would worry about switching over to an equal gain fade or crossfade. And that's because if you use an equal power crossfade in that kind of situation, your fade or your crossfade is just a little more likely to be uneven and you're more likely to get like a sudden level boost in that crossfade. Okay, and then you can change how the waveform is actually displayed here under your fade using these buttons here. And these also come more into play when you're doing a crossfade, um, as well as these, the one, two, or both. That's definitely more applicable to crossfades when we have two clips, two waveforms that are interacting here. But um, that's basically our fade dialog. So then you hit OK, and Pro Tools creates that fade right here for you. So now you have a fade. And again, that shortcut was just Command F once you highlight a section, right? And so this clip here actually has a fade on it. So you can actually use Command F to overwrite a fade. Ta-da. You can also, when you're in the Smart Tool, you can hover at the edge of a fade to get the trim icon here, and you can drag the fade around. And you can actually change the length of the waveform doing this. So that's one way you can edit a fade. I also showed you guys earlier, if you highlight the whole fade and hit delete, it deletes the fade without deleting the underlying audio. You can also, let's say I want this fade to look less linear and I want it to look more like this one. I can double click on it with the grabber tool and that opens up this fade dialog again. And you can just drag around that fade. Oops, I made it the opposite. <laughs> cool. So let's talk about crossfades. So I'm gonna hit B to break here just so I have two clips here. And basically when you have two clips that are touching, they have to be touching, you can make a crossfade with that smart tool. So instead of hovering at the top and making a fade out and a fade in, you can make a crossfade. 
And so the advantage of that is when we do a fade out and fade in, we're essentially going to zero really quick. So you're gonna have this moment of negative space, so to speak. Whereas with a crossfade, it's fading out this left clip and it's also fading in this right clip at the same time. So yeah, basically you can just click and drag. You can also highlight and then do Command F and that'll pull open this dialog again and it'll just automatically know that you want a crossfade here. You can do all the same options here. So we have the standard, the S curve, and then the different shapes again. And we have that for the in shape and for the out shape. So the fade in, the fade out, right? So we also have equal power and equal gain, but the new option here is none. And basically with none, what it does is it's doing it more like, kind of like when you do volume automation over a clip. So it has a default, and then you can actually click these little black squares here and drag things around. So you can modify your fade in, fade out, however you wanna modify it. kind of fun. All right, and then you just hit okay when you have it how you like it, and it will make that fade for you. Uh, there are a few other options here, so you can go to edit and then fades, and you just have another way to create fades, right? You can create fades, you can delete fades, you can have fade to start, fade to end. So you can create fades through this edit drop down if you want. It's probably the slowest way to do it, but you could. And that's basically it. There's also some other stuff like working with batch fades, but I actually covered that in another video. So I'll put a card up on the screen for that. I believe it was a video on podcast editing. So yeah, that's basically it. The basics of creating fades, working with fades, Remember Command F to create a new fade, or you can just use the smart tool to create that fade or cross fade. So yeah, I hope you guys found this useful. Thanks for hanging out with me. Please, if you like this video, hit the like button, comment, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, all that junk. And if you wanna support my channel more directly, I do have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash noise. And my patrons do get access to additional content that's not available to my YouTube subscribers. So I try to make it worth it to you guys to become patrons, but I'm always open to new ideas and suggestions and feedback. So yeah, that's about it. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I come out with new videos every Wednesday, and thanks for watching. Okay.